Today we're going to see if we can game on this new mini PC from Geekcom called the IT13. This PC is powered by a 13th gen Intel Core i9-13900H. It's got 14 cores, 6 performance cores running at up to 5.4GHz and 8 efficiency cores running at 4.1GHz. It's got 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM running at 3200 MHz and a 2 terabyte NVMe SSD. So while not the latest generation of components, it should still be a fairly powerful mini PC. In the box you get the mini PC, a 120 watt power adapter, an HDMI cable and a VESA mount. Graphics are likely to be the bottleneck when gaming, as we'll be relying on the integrated Intel Iris Xe graphics, so we'll have to see how this performs. Taking a look around the PC, on the front we've got two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, a 3.5mm audio port and then the power button. The sides are mainly just ventilation holes, but we do have a full size SD card slot on the right. On the back we've got the main set of I.O., including a DC input, two HDMI 2.0 ports and two USB 4 ports, so you can connect up to four displays. You can connect two 4K displays through the HDMI ports and two 8K displays through the USB 4 ports. We've also got a 2.5 gig Ethernet port in the middle, as well as one USB 3.2 Gen 2 port and one USB 2.0 port. Adding to the connectivity, we've got Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2. So next let's get it booted up. I'm pleased to say that the IT13 comes with a fresh install of Windows 11 Pro, and it doesn't have any pre-installed bloatware. If we open up the performance monitor, we can see our CPU is a 13th gen i9. We've got our 16 gigs of RAM running at 3200 MHz, our 2TB SSD is showing up, and the GPU is the integrated GPU with shared memory. Next I want to run two benchmarks. The first is Firmark to test the GPU and thermals. Under full load, the IT13's fan does get quite loud. The small cooler also probably doesn't have enough thermal capacity to handle a full sustained load indefinitely. We get a score of 2336, and an average over 3 tests of 2338. This is not great, but is fair for integrated graphics. Next let's open up CPU-Z. Here we can see a bit more information than we could in the performance monitor, but it all looks as expected. Let's run a CPU benchmark on it and see how that does. Similar to the Firmark benchmark, the fan ramps up quite quickly. The score also does drop on consecutive tests and under a sustained load, so it definitely looks like the cooling solution is fine for the base load and short spikes in load, but doesn't handle a full sustained load well. We'll look at this when we open it up. Over three tests we get an average multi-thread score of 7618, which is pretty good for a low power CPU. Now that we've done some benchmarking, let's try gaming on it. I'm going to open up Counter-Strike and we can see how that performs. With the graphics set down to low, we get over 90 FPS. It looks terrible, but the performance is good and there's room to improve it. On medium settings there's a fair balance between playability and appearance. I feel like you wouldn't be disappointed playing on these settings given that the Geekcom IT13 can fit into your pocket. With graphics set to very high, we're not off to a good start. In the home screen we're already at a dismal 9 to 10 FPS, and the integrated GPU is really struggling. In-game is oddly a little better, but still hovers around 10 to 15 FPS. I guess technically I could play like this, but it gives me a headache after a few minutes, and it's basically impossible to aim at anything. But I don't want to leave it at that. Let's open it up and see what's on the inside, and look what we can do to improve GPU performance. I think the best place to start is by removing the screws on the bottom. We've got a bay for a 2.5 inch drive on the bottom cover. On the motherboard we've got the 2TB Lexar NVMe drive and our two sticks of DDR4 RAM. We've also got an M.2 SATA port. Geekcom claimed that the IT13 is user friendly to upgrade, and it certainly looks that way. You could easily swap out the RAM, replace the NVMe drive, or add additional storage through the second M.2 port or 2.5 inch bay. 
I presume we'll need to remove the screws on the top to get the motherboard out, and I want to take a look at what the cooling solution looks like, so let's do that. Under the fan, the heatsink has a very small contact area with the CPU, so I wonder if I try to replace the thermal paste with some better quality paste if that'll make any improvement. With the heatsink removed, the thermal paste looks like it's applied evenly, but it looks a little dry. So I'm going to try clean it off with some alcohol, and I'll then replace it with better quality thermal paste. I've put some new paste on, so I think that's about all we can do to the cooling setup without replacing it. Next I'm going to try a bit of a hack job. I've got a small M.2 adapter that I'll plug into the port that the NVMe driver is in. If we swap that out, then this adapter allows us to use an Oculink cable to plug in an external GPU. The adapter is a bit small, so I've 3D printed another adapter for the adapter so that it fits into the same slot. So that allows us to use a GPU, which will dramatically improve gaming performance, but now we don't have a boot drive anymore. If I had an M.2 SATA drive, I could plug that into this port, but I don't, so I'm going to instead use the port on the 2.5 inch bay and add a 2.5 inch drive. If I put the drive into place, then it's going to block access to the Oculink port. So I'm going to remove the drive from its enclosure as well, as this will make the whole build a lot more compact. I obviously can't put this back into the Geekom case, as the Oculink port would be facing the bottom, and there isn't a cutout for it. So rather than have a Frankenstein mix of computer parts on my desk, I've designed and 3D printed a new case for it. This case stands the Geekom PC upright and allows easy access to the Oculink port. It's also got space to mount the SSD and has a lot of airflow on both sides for cooling. It's probably difficult to tell on camera, but this computer is tiny. It's even dwarfed by my recently built mini RTX computer, which I thought was quite small. So let's get it booted up and see what kind of performance we get from it. With the Oculink cover removed, we can plug in our external GPU. I can't tell much difference in boot time with the SATA SSD instead of the NVMe drive, but honestly I'm just happy that the setup actually boots. Opening up Task Manager, we can now see our Radeon RX 6600 GPU connected. In CPU Z we can see the same but I'm interested to see if the thermal paste has made any difference to the CPU benchmark figures, so let's try that out. It still seems to thermal throttle, but I feel like it's taking a bit longer for the fans to spin up this time. After a few seconds, the result was 7756, and an average of 3 tests was 7749, so we have got a little over 100 extra points. This is only a little over a 1% improvement, so it's probably not worth removing the heatsink for if you pick one of these up, but I think it was worth trying out. Next let's try Fermark and see what the new external GPU does. Even a few seconds in, the external GPU is obliterating our previous score. We're getting significantly better performance with an average of 123 FPS. Over three tests I got an average of 7411 which is over 3 times better than the integrated GPU. Lastly, let's see if we can do better than 10 FPS in Counter-Strike. With graphics set to very high, we're now getting around 110 to 120 FPS in the home screen. This is already an order of magnitude better than our integrated graphics did. In-game it's even better, we get around 180 to 200 FPS. I knew this would give us a big improvement, but I didn't expect it to be an improvement of almost 13 times the original. I guess that's what happens when your GPU is now bigger than the computer. In any case, I think this is a really cool little PC. It's ultra portable when you need it to be, you can just unplug the GPU and it'll revert back to the integrated graphics if you need to take it somewhere. But you've still got the power of a dedicated GPU at home when you need it. The base Geekom RT13 is a really powerful mini PC, and it'll tackle a wide range of workloads. 
It's upgradable in future if you need, and you can even add a GPU to significantly improve gaming performance. Check out Geekcom's web store to get your own RT13. They've recently launched into the Australian market as well, so I'll put links to their stores in the USA and Australia in the video description. Let me know what you think of my case design and what you think of the Geekcom RT13. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics, projects, tutorials and reviews.